Hi everyone, Corey here with Team Kramer Fishing and this video is going to be a review of Daiwa of the Daiwa Presso Ultralight Travel Rod. Okay, if you're new to the reviews that I do um, on our fishing channel here at Team Kramer Fishing, um, unlike some reviews where they kind of get new products in and they analyze each part of the reel or rod or tackle um, and kind of give you an expert opinion on it, what we do is we take it out and we use it a lot and then come back and I tell you what I think about it for the <clears throat> applications that I'm trying to use it for. Okay, so this review is going to be uh, for the Daiwa Presso Ultralight Travel Rod. I actually have two of them now. I have a 6 foot version and a 6.6 six version. Um, if you would like to watch a more um, detailed review of kind of the features of the product itself, um, there's a YouTube channel called iFish, and I'll leave the link in the description to the review. But Victor over there did a fantastic review on this rod, um, including him catching a 40 inch muskie on the ultralight rod. And I watched his video, and that's when I decided that I needed to try this rod out. So whatever you don't get in my video, which is more of, I've been using this rod all year basically, and I'm gonna get, tell you how it worked for me for what I'm trying to use it for. Um, his will get much more into, into each component and how it looks and feels and, and everything like that. And if you watch his review, I agree with almost everything that he, he says in the review. Now there are two notable things um, that are different, or at least one big notable thing. One is that I'm using, I'm, I'm reviewing the travel rod version. So <clears throat> that version breaks down into four pieces and um, it's not very big at all if it's in this little case. There's actually room to spare in this in this case. So I think this is probably under two feet for this case. It's not very big at all. And it's super light. So his review was of the, I think it was the 6.6 six and the seven foot versions of the rod. I think he has a couple of them, if I remember correctly. I know he had the seven foot and um, Really his only critique was that it was a little too limber and that if you're jigging from a boat for crappie, um, the sensitivity isn't quite there compared to some of the, to a variety of other rods that you could get. Um, now what I found with the travel rod, and this could be because the different sections slide together, which I'll show you in a second, um, it seemed stiff enough for me. Now I'm used to using um, pretty flexible rods anyway. And whereas he was fishing from a boat doing a lot of his fishing, I fish from shore. Um, so when I do jigging, it's usually on the ground. I'm hopping like uh, a worm or a crayfish imitation on the bottom. And so I use, I'm waiting for the fish usually to completely, pick, if you take like a smallmouth bass or a largemouth bass, I'm waiting for that fish to completely pick up that lure before I set the hook. So th this and this rod is perfectly sensitive enough to do that. I can tell when the fish picks up the lure, I can tell pretty much when it has it in its mouth, and then I can set the hook. So that's a little different than when you're on a boat and you're trying to feel a very, you know, if, if, a, if you're, floating your lure here and the uh, bluegill or crappie or whatever comes up and they just kind of barely suck it in or they, you know, that that might not be enough to send the information back up to the rod when they're hovering at the same level like that. So you need a more sensitive rod. Um, that being said, I mean, I, and I didn't fish with it from the boat, I think this one is probably more sensitive than the than the non-travel version because it's a little bit stiffer. And I'll get into some of that here in just a minute too. So make sure you, you watch both or you use, if you only watch mine, make sure you watch his too. 
Um, we both love the rod, essentially. Okay, so let me premise this also with uh, what I'm using this rod for. Okay, this is basically a rod that I'm using for anything that's not a big giant, that's not over 10 pounds, we'll say. Um, everything from microfish all the way up to a 10 pound catfish or a 10 pound carp, which is biggest I'm, I mean, you could catch bigger ones, but that's the biggest I'm likely to catch while I'm fishing for something smaller, right? Um, and most of those fish are gonna be on the smaller end of that range, you know, a couple pounds or lower. So you want a rod that's fun to catch small fish on, okay, that's easy to use, that's fun, convenient, um, but that can handle a big fish if you happen to get lucky and get a big fish on the line, you know. So that's what I was looking for, and I also wanted it to be very portable. So one of the problems I've had we do a lot of uh, camp and fish where we pack all of our camping gear into our car with a family of four. And so these rods, the, the more that I can break them down and get them into a small um, small case like this, which this case is included with the Presso. Um, and it's a nice clam. Um, you just squeeze a little bit and unzip it. Then you get access to, your, to the parts of your rod. Um, these are just ideal for what I do. I also like to have my rod lengths six feet to six and a half feet because I fish in Iowa in the summertime, it's overgrown with weeds. This is my cat Coraline, yeah. Um, it gets overgrown with weeds on the banks and if you get a rod longer than that, you're gonna, it's gonna be hard to cast in some tight spaces or we're walking creeks that can get overgrown and stuff on the sides. Having a six foot to six and a half foot rod seems to work the best for me. I usually get six foot rods, and for this, the first Dio Presso that I got, the one that I've been using this summer, um, I went with six six because Victor thought it would be, um, he thought the longer would be better. And I thought, hey, well, we'll try it and we'll see. And I did like the six six works basically just as good as the six foot for everything. It might give you a little bit better casting distance too. So, um, so I like the 6.6 six version for that. So really this is a do everything, go anywhere rod, okay? And my, the, the previous rod that I have that I've done a review on that, um, actually I've done a review on a lot of rods for this, but the previous um, winner, we'll call it, is the Ugly Stick, let me grab it grab one of them, I have two of them. It's the Ugly Stick GX2 specifically, and this is very important, the six foot um, light action, okay? I have a, a review on this where I basically say, this is the best multi-species rod for your money, you know? And I still agree with that I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but I still agree with that. And this one breaks in two pieces. So it has just two three foot sections. It's not too big. It's pretty easy to pack away. Um, I've, I've put it on like boats and ferries and stuff. I mean, and uh, and you can put it just on the side of your backpack, you know, like a tent, tent pole almost. Um, <clears throat> and if someone only had, um, one rod or it was their first rod and it and they were going to use it for the most amount of fishing and different types of fish possible you know this is still the rod that i would get first okay and they only cost like 40 bucks and basically indestructible i've had this one three years used it a lot it's been a lot of places and been through on a lot of trips and it's still going strong so i've also used a Fenwix HMX, St. Croix Premier, um, Fenwick Eagle, and I've reviewed all those, all in the same size and approximate action, either light or medium, medium light. Um, so the Presso is ultralight, <clears throat> and I'm testing it out to see how it compares to the rest of these, to these rods. Um, so let's take a quick look at how it comes together. I don't have it strapped in here, one of the things that I, I don't have it strapped in, so this, let me just actually take it out real quick. 
So it comes in four pieces. There's all four of them. One of the things that's a little bit annoying, and I'm not sure, maybe I'm just not using it right, and the, the Japanese guys or whatever that made it at Daiwa, it has these Velcro straps that hold, and when I got it, when I got it like two rod segments were on this side and they had it strapped in, and two were on this side and they had those strapped in, but these things, they're just, there's a bunch of extra material here and I guess maybe it's so you can grab it easier or something. I, I assume that the engineers who designed this maybe had a reason for it. But the problem is they, they built the Velcro in too much Velcro. So like if you were, were to Velcro this one all the way across, it doesn't leave any space over here for this other Velcro to stick into it. They needed to put like double Velcro on one of the sides or the other. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's, very minor quibble about that design but i love the the clam is great because you can really just put it in here simple and it zip you can pull it with one hand and zip it with one hand and you're ready to go and it's i would call it semi hard so it's not just like a soft sleeve case it does give the rod enough protection to protect it i mean i don't know if you could you'd really have to do something to like bend it in half to break anything so nice case and it comes with the rod Okay, let's put this together. Um, we can take a quick look. This is a brand new rod, by the way. I haven't used this one yet, so it looks really nice. I'll show you my other one too. So this is the six foot version. I mean, it's absolutely just a beautiful rod. And just everything about it is just perfect almost. I have no complaints at all. This kind of screws up from the bottom. It's just big enough. Here's the reel that I use. I use. I just reviewed this reel too, so you probably just saw this review. But so I have a a Pen Battle Two One Thousand that I put on here. So you get that on there, and presto, whammo! I mean, this thing is ready to go. And one of the other things that I really like about what they did with this is. They give you a lot of space for these segments to, so as, so this tapers down a little bit where the next section slides in. So over time, when you're taking it apart and putting it together, um, you'll notice that, and I've seen some people on the reviews that say, oh, that doesn't slide in altogether. Well, it's designed that way. So for a reason too. So you slide it in and there's like, I don't know, an inch or a centimeter, centimeter and a half or something left here where it doesn't slide all the way in. That's so that as years go by and it slowly rubs up, you know, wears down, um, it still fits together tight. So it'll, you know, four years from now, if you've used it like a thousand times, it will slide in a little bit deeper, but it will still fit together tight so it doesn't loosen over time. That's why they designed it that way. So it only takes a second to put this rod together. And it is incredibly light. I mean, it weighs almost nothing. But in terms of fishability, it can catch big fish. I mean, I the biggest I got on my 6.6 on my six six was a six and a half pound catfish. And I have that video, if you wanna watch that video, to see, it's good because it, it, the catfish makes several runs because I was using a four pound line. And you can see the bend of the rod. And the bend of this rod is just magnificent. Um, you know, it comes right into the middle of the rod. You, you get the full arc, full bend, and I'm pretty sure this is a little stiffer than the non-travel versions. Um, but I like having the travel version because it breaks down and you get a nice case to keep it from getting damaged. So in terms of sensitivity, I thought it was great. Um, Castability, great. It basically, it does everything just as good as you could possibly want from a rod. It's it's better than the Saint Croix. It's better than the Fenwick. Um, and other than durability, it's better than the Ugly Stick. So it's basically an all-around winner, with the one caveat that. I wouldn't have this be your first rod or you know if you didn't have a backup because I broke my first one okay and that's why I have two of them now 
So let me explain what happened there. And hopefully I can prevent anybody else from breaking theirs the same way that I broke mine. Um, and that's the main purpose of me kind of sharing what happened here. Okay, so here's my 6-6. My six, six. And before I get into how I broke it, um, I want to say that it's, it's, it's about one inch longer here. This is about one inch longer. And then the other five inches are at the top. But this rod is quite a bit beefy. I mean, these are both ultralight rods. The only difference is one is six inches longer than the other. Other than that, they're both travel, they're both presso, they're both ultralight. Everything else is exactly the same. In fact, the reel seat and handle here are identical. If you put them side by side, they're identical. You can see you got the one inch or maybe inch and a half extra at the bottom on the 6.6 version. Um, but the 6.6 is bigger. I mean, it is bigger around and it's a little bit beefier. So I, I haven't fished the 6 yet, so um, I don't know. Now my, my expectation is that it will just be even more fun to catch bigger fish. But this one was plenty, the 6.6 six was plenty fun to catch bigger fish, but this is how I broke it. And I've broken a lot of fishing rods in a lot of different ways. I keep finding new ways to break them, but I've never broken a rod like this before. And a couple things conspired to get together to, to make this happen, I think. I was fishing with Vivian and we were fishing under a train, train track and we'd be uh, a big train bridge actually not a, i mean and so when the trains come over we were right under it it would just make all kinds of noise and everything which was kind of annoying to film um and viv had wanted to go home and i was wanting to fish a little bit longer so she was kind of bugging me about leaving and then a train was coming i was like fine a train was coming by so i kind of had that train going on i was like okay it's time to go and i took my jig which i had on and I went to hook it on the hook keeper here and I probably wasn't paying attention to, you know, how, how far away it was. I just basically tried to pull it down too far and I looked up and I had broken the tip off. I tried to repair it, but it, it failed. Um, so yeah, that it broke right here and then I tried to repair it, but it didn't work. So, yeah, and so I think what happened was, you know, it just put too much pressure on this top. Now, I've never had that happen before, and part of the reason I think I haven't is a lot of times I'm using ugly sticks, which are fiberglass rods. The tips are very flexible, so I'm so used to having just those tip tips bend so easily um, that I just got in the habit of maybe pulling a little bit too tightly when putting the jig on the hook keeper. So I think that was part of me probably just developing bad habits. The other part could be that this is a travel rod. And so just as it was stiffer um, than the normal rod, because of the way that it slides together here, you know, you get like double layers. The bend is perfectly smooth though, when you, when you have a fish on. So it doesn't affect that. But the angle of that pole, you know, you look and it's identi It's right in the middle, right? It broke right in the middle of that segment, almost to the millimeter. So I think what happened was that was just stiff enough or, you know, that transition part was just stiff enough that it put that pressure on the top without me, without me realizing it. Um, the other thing is um, it's possible because because usually if you pull a little bit too hard, I don't have my drag set that high. So it'll just pull drag out of the reel if I'm, if it gets, if it pulls a little bit too much. But I had some braid on and it's possible it could have got looped around here without me knowing it. When I looked up, I noticed that it had, it could have happened when it broke. But I noticed that there was line looped around here. And I think one of the possibilities is... That line had looped around without me realizing it. So when it started to put a little bit too much pressure and still instead of just pulling a little bit of drag out of the reel to loosen the tension, um, it just eventually got so strong that it snapped. But I mean, I've, I mean, I've hooked lures on lure keepers, uh, you know, thousands of times. All right. And 
with rods very similar, except for most of those were six feet instead of six and a half feet. So it's possible that extra six inches, um, you know, which is about what broke off, could have made the difference too. But some combination of that um, caused me to accidentally break my rod. I'm gonna call Daiwa and see if I can just get this one piece for the top from them. I don't know if they'll, if they will um, do that or not. But um, I was very disappointed when that happened because I really love this rod. <clears throat> Obviously I bought another one. Um, after I broke this one, I went and looked to try to find, because I'm always trying to test out new stuff, especially for the channel. I can just share different things, you know. Um, for what's working for me for the specific type of fishing that I do and you know I wanted something light or ultra light I wanted something six to six six in a travel rod um, that I hadn't tried before and the pickings were pretty slim St. Croix has a Triumph travel rod that I could have tried that was pretty similar specs as those however they have I don't have my old Premier here, but um, the, the, the real seat was the kind that screws up from the bottom like this with the exposed threads. And I'll tell you what, I mean, I would really love to try more St. Croix rods. They're beautiful rods. I generally like the way the blank works, but they're very expensive. And if I'm going to pay um, $120 or more for a rod, I don't want cheap reel seats with the plastic threads exposed and the and the last St. Croix I had I did a review on it was, the handle was so thin you know my hand would get sore like trying to hang on to it so I mean I really just wasn't going to spend $120 on a St. Croix um, Triumph travel rod when I could look at the handle and tell already I was going to hate it um, and you can buy the Presso for half as much so the list price on my 66 Presso when I went to on Amazon when I went to go buy another one was uh, like eighty four dollars, but I know when I originally bought it I only paid like sixty bucks. So I looked around and I found a six foot version for sixty two dollars, and I'll put links to those um, to the main kind of paid the main uh, Presso Ultralight Travel Rod Amazon page or whatever. Um, in the de in the description, but um, I didn't want to <laughs> I didn't want to spend eighty bucks when I could spend twenty bucks less and just get a smaller version. So I'll get to, I'll try out this new one too, and I'll let everybody know the difference. Um, so far, I didn't want to take it out and try it before this review for fear that I might break it again. I wanted you to be able to kind of see what the rod looks like, you know, in its non broken form, and maybe even in um, it's new kind of shiny form although I will say I mean other than the the cork which I like this kind of aged look on the cork here's the here's the original one um, this is a whole summer spring and summer's worth of use and it did just fine I mean there's not you can just it's just normal wear really and I haven't cleaned it up or anything but you could go in and spiff it up a little bit I mean, they just have so many cool things. The ridges on these, on the, really, it's amazing. This this rod, it's it's really a work of art, and it works well. Um, if it was a little more durable, I would say, just everybody should start off with this. You know, if you were like a twelve year old kid, you know, how much storage do you really have in your bedroom to store these big giant rods that everybody gets when you could store it in a little clam case, um, like this, you know. Or, you know, you're going someplace where you have to hitch rides or whatever, ride your bike or, you know, you can chuck that right in there. I even put my uh, Battle 2 in and then I just stick the little handle out, take this handle off and put the little, stick that part up and I can carry everything in here with a little fly box and you have your whole setup and just this little, it's really, really nice and easy to get around. So, but relatively easy to break you know when it's not in the case so just like my other rods that I've broken that weren't necessarily a manufacturer's fault um, this one I would say was probably mostly my fault 
Um, but even though, even though that is, people make mistakes, you know, maybe I pulled down too far on it. Okay, well, somebody else is going to do that too. So you have to, especially if they're just starting out fishing, right? So if I was to get my first rod, I would stick with that ugly stick. But once I had that and I wanted to get something that was a little more refined, um, the Dio Presso is the way to go. I mean, it's a fantastic rod. I absolutely love it. And um, I'm gonna keep my eye out for other ones, uh, but right now, you will not be disappointed. It, it, it is the best light or ultralight rod in terms of performance and flex, flexibility, different ways you can use it. I caught largemouth, smallmouth, uh, pretty good sized catfish, all the way down to, you know, like three inch fish, um, trout, uh, and it just did great in every single application. So I don't know what else I can say about it other than that. Um, check it out. If you, if, you have, if you get one and you use it, let me know what you think. Let me know if you think the same thing. Everybody has a different style of fishing, so um, I'd be interested to see what everybody else thinks. All right, thanks for watching Team Premier Fishing. Make sure to subscribe. I have a lot more review videos. Um, we do a lot of family fishing on the channel, um, a lot of travel, camp and fish, stuff like that. Um, let's see, we're getting toward the end of summer here. So in the wintertime, we'll be doing ice fishing. And um, my daughter's uh, starting to make videos too now on the channel. She has been part of the channel since the very beginning, but now she's old enough where she's starting to create some of her own stuff. So you can see some more stuff from her too. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.